Hi, I'm Andrew Harvey, technical writer here at Trihedral Engineering. My job is to make sure that you have all the information you need in order to build your monitoring and control applications. Now to start, I want to make sure that you're aware of all the features and options that are available to show you how to use this program. Now, first, there are these videos. In these, I cover topics from the various training courses, but cut up into nice 10 minute chunks so that they fit into your busy schedule. Now, in addition to these, you can also go to the program itself, and there you're going to find the help files. Now, I spend a lot of my time trying to make those as helpful as I possibly can. In there, in addition to a complete VTSCADA reference, you're also going to find a tutorial. That's been designed so that in 15 minutes or less, you can see how to get up and running to start building your applications. If you can spare well, about an hour to complete the entire tutorial, you'll have a pretty good overview of most of the major features. Now, in addition to all of that, you can go to the website. In particular, you will find PDF files for the course workbooks. Now, both the basic course and the advanced course workbooks are there, available for you to download totally free of charge. You can also find all of the exercise files that you'll need. So at your own pace and in the comfort of your own office, you can go through the course on your own speed, even if you can't take the time to come to one of my training courses. So with that as an introduction, let's turn to the computer and see how to get started using this program. When you start VTSCADA, the first thing that you're going to see is the VTSCADA Application Manager. Now we refer to that as the VAM. As a developer or system integrator, this is your starting point for creating new applications. Most of the applications that are already in the list are utilities for programmers. You can safely ignore those for now. At the bottom of the VAM are six buttons that you do need to know about. Now at the right is the stop button. That will stop VTSCADA and all running applications. The I opens the About VTSCADA information dialog. There, you can see which features are enabled by your license key. Now, very important thing to know here is that when you install VTSCADA, you've installed everything. It's the license key that controls what's enabled or not, which means you don't have to keep installing more components in order to add new features to this program. Going back to the list of buttons, the color wheel allows you to change the overall theme appearance of the uh, applications. Um, plus, within every application, you can go to the configuration and set an independent theme for one application at a time. The question mark opens up the help. Now that will open in your default web browser. It's been designed for different audiences, so that the first couple of chapters are designed to give operators an overview of how to use the most commonly found tools in every application. The next chapter is for administrators, covering security and overall configuration. Then there are chapters for developers, showing you all of the tools to build your applications. And then finally, there's a reference to the VTSCADA programming language, the API. So if you want to create your own tools for building applications, you can do that with the built-in language. Returning to the VAM, the globe is used to set up the VTSCADA internet server. If you plan to allow operators to connect to your application over the internet, or if you plan to use the VTSCADA ODBC driver to, to query your tag database as if it were an SQL database, then you'll need to configure the server using the dialogues found there. And finally, there's the Add Application Wizard, which is the starting point for all new applications. Opening that, I see that there are two options. A quick add is used most often. That's going to create an application with all of the standard VTSCADA features. That's probably what you'll use in 99% of the cases. But just taking a look at the advanced options, going next, there is a Create New option here, but it will also allow me to choose a base layer. In other words, another application that I want to build on top of, inheriting all of the features that were developed in that original application. 
the find existing allows me to open up an application that's stored in a folder on this computer, but not currently listed in the VAM. Get from change set is used most often by system integrators when they distribute their application to a customer. With this, everything from the application is packed up into one file for easy distribution. You could also make a copy of your application, again from a change set. This gives you a safe place to experiment with new ideas without modifying your running application. And finally, if you are going to run your application on multiple servers, so that you've got automatic backup of all the tag history, alarms, and everything else, plus you've got automatic failover from one server to another, this is the recommended path to follow to add your application to another workstation. Now, going back to the first dialog, I'm going to simply do a quick add and create a new application, which will have everything I need in order to do some basic development. The checkbox is there to start the application, and clicking Finish, it's going to create the application, it's added to the VAM, and now while that is creating the application in the background, I'll point out a couple of buttons. You can throw it away. You can start and stop the application. You can import file changes if you've written your own code and want to bring it in. And there's also a configuration. Yeah. And here's the, uh, the application up and running. I'm going to resize that slightly on my screen. Now, this opens up to the page menu. This gives me all of the built-in pages in, shown in one place. So I can see that built into every application, I have alarms, reports, diagnostics. All of these pages are given to you right off the start, so you don't have to build these on your own. Using my navigation button to go back. I also have a remote sites. So if I have geographically linked sites, I can put pins on a map and those pins can then open up a site page that will give me a list of all of the I.O. It's built automatically for you, and it's a very handy feature. Again, going back, there are some sample pages that give you both an overview of what can be done, plus everything that's shown in those sample pages. You can copy and paste to reuse these features in your own application. And finally, there's the overview page. This is a starting point for building your own user interface pages for the application. Now, it has a bit of information right on the screen to show you how to get started. And what it refers to in this, these buttons are the tools found at the top of the screen. Now, the first button is a link to the Idea Studio. The Idea Studio is where you create the pages and build the user interface for the entire application. The next button over is the Tag Browser. The Tag Browser is used to create the linkage between your application and the physical hardware that runs the actual um, system, whatever you're building. So you'd build in a port, drivers for whatever driver you have, and all of the I.O. using the Tag Browser. The tags, once you've built them, can then be displayed in the Idea Studio by linking those tags to widgets. The configuration button allows you to configure pretty much anything you can think of related to the overall appearance and also how the application runs. Pretty much anything that's not a tag or an actual display piece, you'll find something within the application configuration dialog to build it. Finally, there are three more buttons. The add page note that's for operators to create the equivalent of a yellow sticky on the page. This is often used if they want to, uh, to leave a message at the end of one shift for the next operator coming in with the next shift. You can use the print button to send a copy of any page directly to your system printer. And there is the alarm icon, which is one of the many links to the alarm page. That will blink red whenever there are unacknowledged alarms in the system. Okay, so now you've seen where the tools are, 
in order to get started and how to find the uh, development tools. Most importantly, you know where to look for help, as I described at the beginning of this video. To learn more, please take some time to watch a few more of my videos in which I will walk you through the development process.